All right, it's been a while since I've done an American Girl doll unboxing. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. I've done like three this week. So anyway, we are going to do a very casual unboxing of some brand new Addie Walker stuff that I got literally less than a week ago. And I've been working really hard to try and get my Pleasant Company version of Addie's collection complete, mint condition, and first edition. So I ended up purchasing for kind of a little bit too much money. But when I say too much money, I mean just I paid market value. I didn't get a good deal on it. But I bought Addie's complete first edition collection from 1993 on eBay, and everything in it is pretty much untouched. So it's a really exciting day today. We're going to look at a first edition first year Addy collection and if I'm feeling a little bit spicy I might show you the rest of my Addy collection towards the end of the video because it is coming along quite nicely. I did a Q&A a while back that I never ended up uploading because it was a disaster but one of the questions I got asked a lot was how are my Addy and Felicity collections coming along and I would say based on my bank account uh, quite nicely. So today yeah let's have a look at my brand new Addy haul and let's just chill out and look at some dolls. All right, if I was a good boy, I did some B-roll at the beginning of this video or maybe somewhere right now showing what the actual trunk looks like because that was one of the big things that I was really excited to finally get because Addy probably has, I would say, maybe my second favorite trunk in the entire Pleasant Company range, my favorite one being Samantha's. So I just love Addy's trunk. It looks like it could be home decor. Like it would just look so pretty under like a console table or something or underneath a coffee table. It's just stunningly beautiful. And let me tell you, it is so well made that I can't even like pick it up and like show it on camera because this thing is solid freaking wood. And it's the first edition version of it too that has like, I, I'm trying to remember what the different versions are. I swear maybe like the later one, I can't remember if the lid detaches or I don't know, there's some differences, but this is sort of like the darker, more handmade looking one. And it's really, really beautiful. And mine only has like a few dings in it, but really nothing too bad. It, for me, the, it was great. Uh, I will say the handles on it feel very flimsy and I'm terrified to pick it up. So yeah, hopefully there's some B-roll so you can see what it looks like uh, in person, but we're going to kind of go through everything that shipped in it because this is a first year collection. So everything fits in here. Now, I guess that said, I did not get like her school desk. I didn't get any furniture, but a lot of us don't count furniture. I will probably ultimately get Addie's furniture eventually, but for right now, if I buy it, it's just going to sit in a box in a closet somewhere for a year until we kind of get moved into a more permanent situation. So I'm not trying too hard to get furniture unless it's just like super duper cheap. But we have our very first item today, which is a first edition Addie doll. I mean, hello. I mean, is this not the most gorgeous Addie you've ever seen? I originally bought this with the intention of selling her because like I said I did not get a really good deal on this I would say like I said I paid like market value I want to say I paid somewhere in the realm of like $500 for all of this which is okay again it's all first edition in really great shape but um yeah my thinking was like oh maybe I could sell the doll and uh you know maybe recoup some of that cost and then I opened the trunk and I was like oh crap I'm keeping the doll so yeah I mean look at her isn't she so beautiful I really really love all Addies my catchphrase is I've never seen an ugly Addie <laughs> and you know these first edition ones I think are particularly beautiful because they have just sort of like darker eyebrows which I think look really great I believe we're losing sunlight just a quick disclaimer the light will probably change a bunch throughout this video I am suffering really badly with migraines and every little thing triggers them including my studio lights lately so I'm having to film with sunlight and that is you know it just I'm leaving it up to the weather basically whether or not we have good lighting so in North Carolina the clouds like go 
like in front of and behind the well not behind the sun but the you know what i mean clouds like will go by and we'll get like dim moments so i'm going to try my best to like make sure that we get to see everything clearly <laughs> so i'll just ramble if it gets a little bit dark but um just know that like i can't work with studio lights lately because i end up in bed for two days with migraines so you know it is what it is so uh, and I hate, that's like one of my least favorite phrases ever. It is what it is. And I, here I am saying it on YouTube for thousands of people to hear. But anyway, so first edition Addy, so incredibly gorgeous. And the way, like the easiest way to tell if it's a true first edition Addy from the first batch ever made is if she does not have grommets in her boots. Um, it would be great if they would focus on camera. I've, who's, Whose face is this getting focused on? I'm trying, all right, I'm getting up. I'm gonna show you up close. Oh my God, for the life of me, I cannot get this to focus on her shoes. It's because my camera is on autofocus and it thinks the dolls are people. I don't know, it's kind of freaky, but uh, I'll, I'll put B-roll in if we can't see. <laughs> is, is this video already a disaster today? I hope you're doing something like more interesting and I'm just on in the background, like rambling like a lunatic. But her first edition boots are like ones without grommets on them. I'll put a picture in if I can't get this to focus correctly. And her shoelaces are like obnoxiously thin and stretchy. They're like almost impossible to keep tied. So like most of the time my Addy dolls are like just chilling with their shoelaces untied. But that's the way you can like really spot a first edition Addy easily as by her boots. They won't have grommets in them and the shoelaces will be really thin. So she was easy to spot because she had her boots. There are a few other ways to tell, but it gets a lot trickier because the night, like the late 1993 Addies like ended up getting grommets in their boots and there were a couple other changes too, but they look very, very similar. So yeah, if you're really, really trying to get a first edition Addy, you really need to find one with the boots. That's how you know for sure, unless you have, I mean, even if you have a receipt, it can still be kind of hard to tell. So anyway, yeah, she is so pretty. Also another thing too is her bonnet is an obvious like first edition as well. <laughs> I'm trying to look at my monitor and so I can make sure that this is in focus. All right, we are having focus issues today. This might end up being basically a slideshow by the time this video is over, but one of the other things about this first edition Addy is that her bonnet has like the really tightly spaced uh, rows of like straw on her bonnet. And we're having major focus issues today because of all of these, I, you know, I bet it's these girls right here trying to still focus as always. But you can see <laughs> that um, I feel like a parent trying to like shush their child. Um, but you can see how her bonnet has like the really tightly um, woven together like lines of straw, like the braided straw in there. That's just another like telltale sign of like very first edition and like early edition Addy stuff. So yeah, that was a really nice treat that this doll ended up coming with. I think a complete meat accessories pack. I'm not I don't know if I've laid eyes on her, uh, is it her half dime? I can't remember her currency, but she has, they, all these earlier dolls came with money and there's a coin or there's supposed to be a coin in here somewhere. But yeah, again, first edition Addies have like fairly dark eyebrows. Now, Mattel went back in later and ended up putting darker eyebrows on sort of like, and I'm I wanna say it was like the early 2000s. So dark eyebrows don't automatically mean a first edition Addy, but I think somewhere around 1994 um, from memory, like sometime that year, they started giving her more of like a no eyebrows kind of look. Her eyebrows were really, really soft. And those are kind of the brows you'll see on the earliest uh, girls of today, like number one and number 18, who are very similar to Addy. They had the same skin tone, head mold. Number 18 basically was Addy, but like the first version, but she didn't have the part in her hair and her hair was like a little bit shorter but uh, and no earrings but other than that they were very very similar but um the eyebrows is kind of how you can tell um whether it's an early like a very early addy or not so she has that like those like telltale like dark eyebrows but she is just is so pretty and like addy can look very very different amongst first editions i've had a lot of them over the years because i at first i was like i'm only going to have one addy doll like i need to get this under control because i was buying like three molly dolls a week for a while like when i started collecting i was just buying every white body doll i could get my hands on and it was just I was at a point where I literally had like 75 dolls that were just Molly, Samantha, and Kirsten. It was 
an issue. So I was really trying to be good with like Felicity and onwards and saying, I'm only going to get one and no duplicates so that my house doesn't get completely overrun. And the FBI shows up and they're like, Hey, uh, what's going on here? So, uh, yeah, the, for a while I was trying to be really good and only keep one Addy. So I was like cycling in Addy after Addy after Addy because the very first first edition one I got, I'm going to just grab her so we can look at her while I'm talking and you can really see how different these dolls look amongst each other. One second. This is the first edition Addy that I got that was the, my very, very first. I, I need to work on her hair just a little bit more, but I really love this one because I love really round faces and because they just look very pleasant company to me. And I, you know, it's just cute. I like I like all dolls, but the round faces really make them feel a little bit more pleasant company-esque to me. So this has been my, like basically my singular Addy doll that I've kept and she was the first one I got and I fell in love with her. However, she had silver eye and she didn't have factory hair. So I was basically on the hunt for one that looked like this, but was completely factory original. And it started the cycle of buying a bunch of Addies and still liking this one better. Just, again, I don't know, maybe this one just imprinted on me because I've repainted her eyes and done an okay job on her hair. It needs a little bit more, but this doll was like played with quite a bit. So she just needed a lot of like extra TLC when I got her, but I was really looking for like that factory mint one. So it was like the one that was always mine that had never belonged to anybody else because yeah, if you've watched my videos before, I've said this story a million times, but I was one of those little boys that wasn't allowed to have dolls. And I especially was not allowed to have a very expensive doll. So um, yeah, I didn't get my first American Girl doll until I was 36 years old. So the, you know, I've really kind of been on the quest to find everything completely mint with their boxes and everything, just so it feels like I got my own Pleasant Company collection. It's not just something that was secondhand. And I know there are a lot of people that love to see the, like, they say like pre-loved or whatever. Some of them, like, again, I think some of them were pre-neglected, but I really, I understand that, like, uh, that it's like fun to get a doll collection that belonged to a kid and see the things that they like wrote in the little um, books and everything. But I'm like, I want my own. So that's why like I'm such a stickler for finding things mint condition. So because this is my first time around the block with Pleasant Company. So I want to get good stuff. I want it to feel new. So that's why like I'm so crazy about all this stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm so crazy about all of this stuff. But so this was my only Addy for a while because I just couldn't find one that was that I thought was prettier than her, even though I ended up getting multiple, multiple first editions coming through the house, like with boxes and all this stuff. And this just still ended up being the one that felt like mine. So she's, you know, permanently mine now, I feel like, but I still have like really wanted to scratch that itch of getting the most perfect one. And honestly, like this one is close but I actually have a third, which I'm just breaking all kinds of rules these days, but I'll just show you here if I can get them like facing the same direction. You can see, at least to me, like how incredibly different these dolls look to each other in the face. Like I feel like this one here has more of like, uh, like a squinty kind of look to her. Like she looks like she's about to say something like that she's thought about Whereas this one is a little bit more neutral. She's just chilling. Like she's, she's got thoughts in her head, but nothing's stressing her out. Like she's just, she's feeling very calm and relaxed. That's probably one of the reasons I, like I was drawn to her, but I feel like their, ex their facial expressions are very different. And these Addies were made in the same batch as each other. So yeah, th this is just like kind of highlighting my point that they're all just like a little bit different. And that is the hard part about like collecting pleasant company and also trying to be good and not hoarding and doing duplicates is that you will get a doll that you fall in love with but it's like well maybe she had a little bit of hair snipped or i had like repaint her silver eye so i want one that's factory mint and then you just end up like being in love with the one that you got originally and you can't find one that looks exactly like her because they're all a little bit different and then you just end up with like three Addy dolls even though you said you were only going to have one. Because I also purchased one brand new with her box 
semi locally i she was shipped but i did end up getting a fairly good deal on this addy again not a great deal i think it's hard to know what things are worth nowadays because people aren't buying as like crazily as they were in like 2021 so first edition addies like in their box haven't been selling like hand over fist lately so i don't even know what the last one sold for but i think anything like if, what i'm about to show you like anything under like 250 dollars is at least an okay deal and i think worth it but realistically 150 or less i think is probably about what you want to spend and i i can't i want to say i spent 200 dollars on this doll i i don't even remember anymore i just really really wanted her and secretly, because she was the first edition and the person selling her was just dumping stuff, I thought there's maybe a shred of a chance that she might be signed. Uh, she wasn't, but I'm still really happy that I purchased her because I'm going to show you why. Oh, but really quick, one of my favorite things about this, if you can see, there is the tiniest little piece of wrapping paper on the end of it right here. <laughs> Somebody got this for Christmas, I think, and um, I'm going to leave that on there. Typically, I don't do that, but this box isn't completely meant. And just, there's just something about that little taped on piece of wrapping paper that I can tell is a very... 1993 looking like uh design on there just by the little shred that i can see like that brings me a little bit of joy like i said i know that i want it to feel like it was always mine but this is like my third first edition addy so it's not that big of a deal it just it makes me happy to see that little piece of wrapping paper i'll just pretend it was my present in 1993. so real quick before we look at the doll this one like came with all of the original like paraphernalia in the box and this was one that had the hardback book if you're not super familiar with early pleasant company originally the dolls would either come with no book or a paperback book or a hardback book, which is kind of goofy, I think, but they had, well, technically four different SKUs because there was like a fourth one that was like a, the signed version. So that I'm sure was like really annoying to keep up with. So they obviously quit doing that eventually, but I always like to get the one that has the hardback book. I just think it's a little bit more collectory. So it was really fun that she actually had the original hardback book of Meet Addy. And additionally, she also had her pamphlet, which, you know, sometimes these get lost. And it was the original pamphlet without... I don't know what's going on with the focusing today. I, I hope that this doesn't end up being a complete disaster. But, um, but yeah, this had the original pamphlet with no like burgundy border around it so like true first edition from 1993 and here is Addie herself again another first edition and I would consider this one completely mint I mean there is a chance I think there might be one little like pull on the hairnet but Addie was the first doll that Pleasant Company ever shipped out that had a hairnet so that's like kind of a fun little piece of history to have as well as like this is the first time that Pleasant Company ever ever used a hairnet which is like I said it's really really cool again she's a first edition because she has the grommetless boots and the thin shoelaces which are staying tied pretty well for now um but yeah, she had her hand tag, even though it's a little bit crumply, but that's fine. But yeah, this is how they shipped. To the best of my knowledge, uh, based on the ones that I've seen, I do believe that they put the hair nets completely over her face. And I could probably try and pull this down a little bit more. But um, yeah, the original Addies, to the best of my knowledge, had the hair net all the way over their, like, their hair and their ponytail. And it pulled all the way over their face I, again i i don't know why they covered the face but they did so uh yeah it just was really fun to see this one like to pull the box lid off and see like what addy really did look like fresh out of the box i thought this was so cool so i will be hanging on to this one and again she's just so pretty i feel like she looks a little bit closer to the one i just got in this first edition lot you can see here they have a few more similarities just with those like really happy eyes but again these dolls to me anyway look so incredibly different which is why it's going to be impossible for me to pick one to sell so i guess i have three addies now and honestly i probably will end up with more as i'm trying to like buy my way through her original collection but i just i absolutely love addy i remember when she was released in 1993 because I was a child in the 90s. So we were getting the catalogs. I want to say somewhere between like, I would say the late 80s probably, but probably like 89, 90. But I specifically remember getting the new Pleasant Company catalog. And 
again, I could not tell you which cover it was. I don't think I ever closed those catalogs. I wanted one of these dolls so bad that I remember so clearly every single picture of the actual catalog pages, but I couldn't tell you which cover it was. I don't remember it because I don't think I ever closed the catalog. I feel like I probably pulled open the centerfold where they had like the full size picture of the doll that was like to scale with real life and probably slept with it in the bed with me pretending I actually had the doll. But I remember getting the 1993 catalog when it was said like, I, I can't remember the language, but it was like something like meet the new American girl, Addie Walker. And I remember opening the centerfold or whether or not it was centerfold it was like that double spread where you like rotate the catalog 90 degrees and i just remember going i have to have her like i just i really fell in love with her from the minute i saw her she was and you know i'd spent time like looking at the other pleasant company dolls they were all obviously very similar like even in my childhood mind like, I felt like Molly and Samantha were the same doll. I don't think I was able to, like, understand that they had different eye colors or whatever. But I just thought, like, Molly was, like, the doll, like, the version that had pigtails and Samantha was, like, the one with, like, the curly hair or whatever. They they looked really, really similar to me. But Addie was, like, so different looking than what they had made before. She had a new head sculpt. And, uh, again, like I've said earlier today, like, they look so happy as well i mean i obviously love the original dolls and most of them look happy some of them look a little bit psycho but just addy had just really captured my heart and i just remember the excitement of seeing the new doll and i did get to read her books now admittedly i haven't reread any of the american girl books yet i'm saving it for a special occasion but you know addy in general is credited with having really really great books that are written by connie porter i'm excited to go back and read them um, but I, so I did, I do remember getting the books and reading them, but that's all I was able to get my hands on or the, um, the catalogs and the books. But I just, I absolutely fell in love with this character and this doll, uh, as a child. And so it was really, really nice to finally get one as an adult. And I'm still like, I can still feel that spark. I, I just remember the day of getting that catalog and being like, there's a new American girl. And again, I begged for her and never got her until like 30 uh, something years later, but here she is. I mean, she's mine now. And this one is completely mint. You can see, if you look carefully, you can see that she has the original hair set. It's a braid that's tucked up under, um, underneath. And I think they use the, that blue ribbon to kind of loop it, um, back into the, the, to the top part of the braid so that it stays like tucked under like that. But yeah, this is just about as mint as an Addy doll gets, so I'm really, really happy to have her. I've got to figure out how to display her. I don't want her to get dusty because I feel like it's probably going to be kind of difficult to, um, like, to take dust off of her hair and, like, not mess up the hairnet. So I'm going to leave her in the box for a little bit until I can figure out a way to display her. But I just, oh, I just absolutely love her. So yeah, I have three Addy dolls now, if you were wondering. And like I said, I'm buying lots of things to try and like complete the Pleasant Company version of Addy's collection. So there's always a chance I'm going to end up with more. We shall see. But yeah, those are my three Addy dolls that I have so far. I don't know how in order all of this will be. We're kind of just experiencing it as I'm unboxing it as it was packed to be shipped to me. But I did, like I said, I feel like I got her oh her dime is in here the person that originally owned this doll was actually smart enough to tie her dime into this knot here i've never seen this before this is actually really clever so we'll go ahead and take it out i mean this isn't factory original so um thank you to addy's original owner for taking such good care of this and looking after all of the little pieces you'll see as we get through it it's all like basically factory perfect so um we have here i think this is a half dime I bet I'm going to, yeah, it's a half time. I'm probably going to struggle to like keep it in focus, but it is so, hang on, maybe if I cover up Molly. Yeah, so, so fun. Like this is untarnished. I don't know if these tarnish or not, but completely untarnished, fully metal. I don't know if this is a real half dime or not. Uh, some of the original coins were actually real coins that were taken out of circulation, basically. I'm not sure about Addies. Maybe you can let me know in the comments if you are a true Addy expert. We have the, um, I forget what this is called, but this is basically her bag that she used to carry around her uh, accessories, including this gourd, which again, this is a first edition. I need, hang on, I'm turning Molly around. Molly's being a troublemaker. So 
you can see here, this is like the original gourd that came with their, her meat accessories. And this is the very original 1993 version. For a few years, they were actually growing, like basically sourcing this from an actual gourd farm. And I even remember at some point in the mid 90s, there was a drought or something happened that they were unable to actually source as many of these as they needed. Because I remember seeing a note that went out with some of those orders that said basically that the gourd wasn't included because of, I want to say it was a drought or something, but like this is a real live gourd and it's got like dirt and all this, hopefully not mold. I don't know why I smelled it, but it doesn't smell like anything, thankfully. But yeah, this is like an actual, like this is a real vegetable basically. So that was really cool. That's like one of the things I love most about Pleasant Company is the like use of plastic was almost non-existent. There is so, so little plastic in the original Pleasant Company collection, like all the way through Josefina. So it's really fun to have these things. They just feel that much more special that they aren't you know completely destroying our environment so yeah this is just another one of those really fun details i just i love original pleasant company you saw her necklace on the doll so i'm not going to go back through that but i think that was the final piece from her meat accessories was the the cowrie shell necklace and then she obviously also had the bonnet on also in the top compartment of this trunk we have her ida bean doll which was part of her christmas story again this was like a big part of like all of the pleasant company collection as well like the dolls had their own doll dolls it was like very inception but um this was Addie's doll Ida Bean and at least the original versions and I would probably assume all the later versions too uh had like basically little PVC pellets in them to like simulate beans uh because this uh, historically this doll uh, according to Pleasant Company anyway I'm not a historian but according to Pleasant Company historically a doll like this that would have belonged to Addie would have been filled with beans as filling so that's kind of what's like in here it's like meant to simulate that she feels a little bit like a beanie baby which obviously is super nostalgic to me because I was super duper into beanie babies and I was allowed to have those and my bedroom got taken over by those so yeah anyway this is Ida Bean so precious let me see if she has a tag in here I think the earliest ones had tags so yeah I don't know if you'll be able to see this but she has the original copyright year of 1993 because Addie's original Christmas collection was released in 1993 alongside the release of the, the Addie doll so yep this was this one's in perfectly mint condition and I actually already have her. So now I guess I have two. And that's, I guess, another thing I have to say about purchasing this collection is I don't want to split it up. This was somebody's original 1993 Addy collection, all bought at one time. I clearly enjoyed and loved because sometimes you'll get like a Pleasant Company collection and you're like, I'm not sure if this child really, or adult, I guess in this case, it could have been an adult. But this person, I don't know if they really, really, really cared for this collection and just kept it so pristine or if they just hated it and didn't like touch it at all. This can kind of be a coin flip, but I do feel like based on what I just saw with her meat accessories, the person that had this loved her. And I think it just, it is, I just can't bring myself to sell the doll for many reasons. And that's one of them. And there are a couple of things in here I have duplicates of, but I'm certainly not splitting this collection. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. I did the same thing with a Kirsten collection from 1987. I got a dreamer Kirsten and I mainly bought that collection for the doll, but but all the stuff that came with it. I was like, this child loved all this so much. I, I could just see the love and care that went into that collection. And I just couldn't bring myself to split somebody's childhood collection up. So I have a lot of duplicates of that as well. I just, I couldn't do it. So yeah, that's why I do end up with a lot of duplicates of things is because I just, sometimes I can't bring myself to split things up. Um, and this is definitely that case. So all of this will stay completely together as long as it's in my possession, as long as I can manage. So um, if you're out there, whoever owned this before and loved it, just know that I love it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give it as much love as you did, and I'm going to do my best to take care of it as I throw Ida Bean on the bottom shelf of my display. Hey, it's me, Jonathan from the future, from the editing room. So yeah, I this is like a couple of weeks in the future, and I have since bought another gigantic lot of Addy stuff, and I'm still gonna try and keep this collection together and kind of have it as my display pieces, but spoiler alert for a future video, I did just get a crap ton of basically brand new in box 1993 edition Addy stuff, which we can all look forward to an unboxing uh, in the near future. But yeah, I think part of this also like came across as like potentially like shaming people for 
splitting up childhood collections which you like honestly you shouldn't feel bad doing that like this is just me being like overly emotional (laughs) unboxing things that I always wanted and finally having them and just like getting you know all up in my feelings about it so yeah I just did want to make it clear because I know like myself included I've done this a thousand times you know sometimes you will get uh, a somebody's childhood collection on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or wherever and you can't really justify keeping everything for financial reasons or like maybe you already have these things so I just I felt like I needed to come in and like make sure it's super clear that I'm not saying like you're a bad person or even doing a bad thing by splitting up a childhood collection because we all do it it happens all the time this stuff was meant to be enjoyed and loved so at the end of the day, you know, rather than just having duplicates sit in a closet because you don't want to split things up, it is, I think, actually better to split things up and sell them so that they can be enjoyed. I I think thinking about like my own childhood toys, I would rather them be split up and actually bring more joy to more people if that's what it took. So yeah, I guess this is a long rambly way of saying like if you split up collections, don't sweat it. I've done it a thousand times. I just was particularly emotional about this collection because it was just, it was so pristine and nice. And I just was really enjoying getting to sit down and go through like a proper Addy collection. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was clear so that my comments aren't flooded with um, people saying like, hey, you hypocrite, you do this all the time. Why should I feel bad about this? So yeah, do whatever you want with your dolls. See if I give a shit. A couple of other quick things we'll look at in here. I know people don't care about these super duper much because it's just sort of like printed paper paraphernalia that I think many of us got. I think even people that weren't able to get the dolls as kids often ended up with at least like a paper doll set. I know that I was able to like get my aunt to buy me one at the local bookstore and we like kind of played with that a little bit. So I know at some point I had paper dolls like from Pleasant Company. So we won't like tear into these too much, but I am actually curious if I finally get in a house that has like a decent kitchen, would you be interested in like cooking through like Addie's cookbook with me? Would that be a fun series or is that like so unrelated to dolls that it's boring? Um, I don't know, but I think it would be kind of fun to cook some of these things from the Pleasant Company cookbooks. Let me know if you want to see it. But yeah, this is like a true first edition because this was before Josefina. You have that like gorgeous photo of them all together. I mean, I know this is just to sell dolls, but it's so nostalgic and so fun to look at these specific pictures printed on this specific paper. I just, I, I bet you some of you out there are watching remember the feeling of like looking through the books. You didn't have the doll, you wanted the doll, but you remember reading the books and stuff and got to this spread here where you could order the doll and you just would like look at that and think, oh, if only that was me, I'm right there with you. But here we are, we're fine. Even though it took several decades, we are finally here, we got the dolls. <laughs> so yeah, I had like a few of this, um, like a few things came in with this as well that, you know, again, they're just going to stay with the collection. I, there's, they're probably not even worth that much money anyways. And I just, I, I really feel like a responsibility to keep this collection together. I know that might seem silly to some people, but it's just how I feel. And that's what I'm going to do. So one really cool thing about Addie's trunk. And I think any of us that have it, this probably like our favorite part about it is that it has a secret compartment in it. And you know, this might not be news to you, but if you haven't seen this trunk before, it looks like it basically has a false bottom in the top compartment that you just like basically press on one side and then you can it, I'm, all this stuff is going to fall out if i do it on camera but you can kind of see like if you press on the bottom there that you can like take it out like take the false bottom out basically and there's some stuff in here that we're going to go through so uh let me take this off really quick off camera so you can kind of see in here if i can do this without spilling everything everywhere that this person also had uh, a couple of books and some pens and stuff in here. We'll quickly go through them. I mean, we're really just chilling today, so I'm not gonna try and race through all of this. I really love taking my time with all of this stuff because Pleasant Company is meant to be savored and enjoyed. It's not just something you just tear out of the box and put up on your display. It's so tactile and like, like all the reasons I said before, like there's not much plastic at all. I just, I know the care that went into the designing and the conception of all of this plus the manufacturing it's just it's something to really treasure so i really love going through pleasant company stuff slowly and taking our time uh, so we have like some of these later books in here which i always think is really interesting because you can see somebody that kind of kept up with 
pleasant company over the years. It's, so it, it's possible that this was an adult that had this uh, because the there's some short story books in here. This is Addie's Little Brother, which I think was published. Let me see if there's a publication date in here. There should be. Oh, it's written like October 2001. I'm curious if that was when they bought it or what. But um, yeah, this was published in the year 2000. So this was purchased right about the time it was published. But yeah, it's interesting that this was like almost a full decade later after the original release of all this stuff. Because I know for sure that this stuff was purchased in 1993. It's interesting that these books are also included in this. This was somebody that like really kind of looked after this. So this also has like a date of October of 2001 in it. And this is High Hopes for Addie, a book that I will ultimately end up reading. And it has like, this is the short story that had the, that depicted her, I think it was called her striped dress. I literally just bought this yesterday. So it's on the way I got, I finally found a version that had the, the hair bow that like the grow grain, like green, ribbon that's in it and i do think this was a little bit later i want to say this outfit was from 1999 yeah the, so the copyright on this story is 1999 so this was originally released in 1999 again like six years after most of the stuff that we are looking at today was released but i'm really i i'm trying to have a complete perfect pleasant company collection like everything that they ever made from 1986 to 1998 but also, like, I will eventually buy everything for the original six girls, like, all the way through Josefina. So I'm working on all of that. But I also, like, look at things like this that were published in 1999. I know Pleasant Roland oversaw the production of this stuff, like, the design and manufacturing and the stories and all of this. So this still feels very Pleasant Company to me, even though this was published a year after the sale of the company to Mattel. I feel like this stuff was likely... Uh, I mean, Pleasant Roland stayed on for two years, so she was still at the company when this stuff was made. So, like, you can still see that original quality and all of that in there. So, yeah, I'm definitely, like, my Addy collection, I want everything they ever made for her. But I'm really, like, trying to, like, be a little bit more aggressive, trying to find some of the things from, like, the mid to late 90s just to really try and finish off the Pleasant Company era of her collection. So, I'm, I'm getting real close. So, we also have in here some collections of pens. Again, I probably won't be able to bring myself to uh, sell or these or anything, but I don't have these, so I'm just gonna keep them in my collection. And I, these look to be random, but yeah, I have like, gosh, there are like six packs of these pens in here. Maybe, if somebody really wants them, maybe they can talk me into selling like the duplicates of these, but yeah, it's just really fun. I love all of this stuff. I just, there was just so much like, hype stuff and merch surrounding the dolls it was i would be so curious how much money they made selling like you know like buttons and paper dolls and stuff because i bet it was still a really big business but you couldn't buy the dolls and the clothes themselves in stores those were only sold through the catalogs but stuff like this you could find in bookstores or like sam's club or costco i guess we had a sam's club so um, yeah, I think that they made up a lot of what they couldn't sell in person by selling like this paraphernalia. And again, I want to say they probably made a pretty decent amount of money on it because it was fairly affordable at the time. I mean, these books, even these books, like these were like $3, I think originally like at retail. So not a lot of money, but I'm sure thousands of people were getting them. We have some of the infamous trading cards. If you purchase on eBay, you, these are probably like kind of the bane of your existence because... Every once in a while, somebody is probably somebody that sells like Pokemon and Digimon cards thinks like, oh, these are probably worth so much money. So they will get like a case of these and unpack every single one of them. And then you're like, oh, wow, 175 new listings for American Girl Molly on eBay. I wonder what treasures we'll find. And it's like 175 trading cards. So I know you probably hate seeing these. So we're not going to go through every single one. But these are the first that I think I've ever received in person and actually been able to see. And I can tell you... They're not really remarkable. Honestly, this seems like a cash grab. Cash grab. Mm -hmm. So honestly, not super special to me. If I really just years from now have everything perfectly mint and I'm looking for things to collect, I might be like, all right, screw it. Let's just try and collect all of the trading cards they ever made. But, you know, I don't foresee that happening, at least not in the near future. So 
Yeah. Well, I don't want to tear this anymore, so I'm just going to toss this back into the trunk, and we will forget we ever saw these, because if you're traumatized by these, I am so sorry. We have one more book, Addie's Wedding Quilt, and I'm not sure if there was any outfit associated with this story. Based on the cover, it, it looks like she has her meat outfit and her, like, heart warmer on, so, um, you know, those were, re were released way before this book, so... I don't see anything. Oh, she's got her striped dress on in here. So that was like kind of a newer thing. But yeah, I don't think there is an actual outfit that's associated exclusively with this. But yeah, that's everything that was in the secret compartment. All right, now we're kind of getting into the guts of the trunk, which is honestly the main reason why I bought all this stuff. Addie is gorgeous. I'm keeping her and I love her, but I had no business buying the doll itself. So th this stuff in here is like a complete... I've said this already, I know, but just to remind you, because we've been talking for so long, this is all stuff from the original issue in 1993 when Addie was released. And one of the reasons I spent a little bit extra doing this is for the reasons I told you before, I'm trying to have a first issue, like complete, like mint collection. It can be a little bit difficult to figure out when certain things were actually made for Addie because they didn't have the amount of changes that they did in the early days, uh, like in the 80s in Pleasant Company. So it can be really easy to tell the difference between like a 1987 set of meat accessories for or, or like certain items from the meat accessory packs for like Samantha versus like 1988. Uh, those things are a lot easier to identify if you just study them, whereas Addie's a lot of times, like unless it has a copyright tag in it, it can be really difficult to know what when certain things were made, uh, particularly like if you're piecing things together. So I just wanted to like ensure that I had a perfect 1993 first edition collection, which is why I ended up buying all this stuff. So everything you're seeing today was like very first issue. So we're just going to go in the order that I pull it out of the trunk. So first off, randomly her um, the ribbon from her like the doll herself that she would have shipped with is in there. I don't know why it wasn't in her hair. Because I think she has her factory hair set. I just think the rubber band kind of disintegrated. But we have her school. Again, I'm going to forget exactly what some of these are called. There, I have like hundreds of Pleasant Company SKUs like floating around in my head. But this is something like school blouse or something. Or blouse with skirt. I don't remember. I've completely butchered that. But yeah, a complete like 1993 issue. This actually, her uh, spelling bee pin is somewhere in here, but yeah, this is, I might as well take the coat off, why not? But here's the original blouse that goes underneath it, and a lot of times these yellow over the years, so it's nice that this one was looked after and stored somewhere nicely. We have the coat, which is so pretty, and it's got this really interesting lining in it. I think it I not from memory, but just from like the things I've kind of seen around online. I think it's that Addie's mother was a seamstress and she would have used something like this to do an interesting lining in. Um, very, very cool. I just really, really close. Like they just paid such close attention to detail, even down to like using multiple different types, like different patterns. Like there's this paisley in here, which is also repeated in the lining of this uh, skirt, which I, American Girl, I feel like, doesn't do much stuff, if anything at all, like this today. But just these little surprise details are so fun. And let me tell you, these are made out of wool. This is not the first time I've purchased one of these. It is very common to get one that has holes in it. They, like, moths love to eat these. So if you are buying one, be really sure that you pick one up that hasn't been eaten alive. Like, check the front and the back. There, are, Like, you will often see these with little holes in them. And that's no fun, right? No one wants a Pleasant Company collection that's been eaten by bugs. Also from her school collection, we have in this very beat up, hefty one zip storage bag, presumably from the 90s, we have her original lunch. Let's go through all of that. I love her lunch. It's so, so cool. I love this little bucket. Again, this is Pleasant Company we're talking about. So we have a completely metal lunch pail, which is so adorable. It's, I think, pretty good scale with Addy, I think, as far as, like, all this stuff. Scale wasn't always perfect, but I think it was generally pretty good in the beginning. Uh, they were sourcing a lot of stuff from other companies that were already designed and made, so um, especially the earliest stuff, it can be kind of tricky on scale, but this looks pretty good, and it's got the original lid that came with it. 
And oh, this tie on here, um, I believe was like part of the story. It's like that tie is so Addie knows it's hers. Like amongst, you know, when you're a kid and you just go to school and you like shove all your stuff like alongside the other kids stuff. This is how Addie knew it was her lunch. Is she had the little green polka dot, um, like scrap of fabric tied to it, which I think is just such a fun detail. Uh, I just love it. And we have her napkin that is sort of like a red gingham. We have her... I think this is a meat pie. I think this is savory, which is like, I'm partnered with an Australian, so I know all about savory meat pies. They love their savory meat pies. We have a clump of grapes. And we have, I mean, I'm gonna show you everything in this lot today. So I'm gonna show you every cookie that spells out love. We have L, O, V, and E. All right, I'm going to try and be good and do this somewhat in order. I can't, I can't make any promises, but I think I've got a cast iron skillet clanking around in here. But I think this is the rest of the stuff from her school story. So I also ended up getting her original school bag. Now, they put her spelling bee pen in here. I'm starting, like I said, I kind of think this could have been an adult-owned collection. So, yeah, like based on this not being taken out of the package, this was somebody that like probably had some OCD tendencies like I do because this will also stay in the package forever. But yeah, that was, I think, I want to say this came with her uh, school outfit. I don't know if they sold it with it or if this was sold separately, but it's more commonly associated with the outfit than it is actually her school bags. So um, yeah, here's the bag. Again, this this will live in this bag forever because after all these years, I can't bring myself to undo the original tape seal, but this is her Abacus. Again, a very first edition, 1993 Abacus. I don't know if you can hear that. A little bit of ASMR. We have her original textbook. The My eyes are so terrible, I cannot read this. Hopefully Addie's eyes were better than mine. They're at least better than Molly's because she didn't have glasses. Or do they have glasses at that point in time? I don't know. I don't know anything about history. So like, don't come for me in the comments if I've said something really stupid. This is like the bimbo version of Pleasant Company. All right, and then she had this set of chalk. Again, never once in its life had anything drawn or written on it, which I love. It's like, once you put the first dusting of chalk on here, it is like constantly coated in white for the rest of its life. So I love having a completely untouched chalkboard because let me tell you, I've gotten a lot of Kirsten's that I've tried to clean to no avail. And then we have her original chalk, which I would assume writes on this, but you know I am not even letting these things touch. So, yeah, and again, I believe we have a... I'm going to lose that later if I'm not careful. Um, we have an original 1993 copyright tag, which I am like 100 miles from the camera that you cannot read, so you will just have to trust me. Unless you're watching me on your big screen TV, which honestly... Some of you, I love this by the way, so please keep doing it, but I sometimes will see somebody on Instagram like posting a picture that they're working on some cool project and they've got, they're like, oh, watching like I Dream of Johnny um, while working on my sewing project. And my head is the size of a freaking blimp on their TV. I'm like, oh my God, I need to back up. You can see every pore and freckle on my head. I am too old for this, but please keep doing it. It makes me feel very loved and as someone who started a YouTube channel thinking that they were just gonna get called slur words in the comments the entire time. The love that I've gotten for this channel has been like just as, if not more healing than getting the dolls themselves. So yeah, if you're watching, especially if you're watching now, I've just been like going rambling for like God knows how long now. If you're here hanging with me, I just know that I see you and it, I am so incredibly grateful that you love spending this time with me. This is my favorite thing in the world to do and to be able to share it with people like makes it worth doing. I don't I don't feel like I would do this like well let's be honest I probably would do this by myself like I would just be talking to one of the dolls or something but um, it's just so much better when you can share it with people that just get it so yeah I just wanted to take the time to say thank you for watching oh and I guess maybe ask for hitting the like button or something actually I heard that the like button actually like lights up when you ask for it so if I say like button like button like button is it like doing that sparkly thing I don't know you can let me know by clicking it <laughs> anyway okay so that's her school bag all right because I'm gonna forget instead of doing her Christmas outfit first all this stuff is in the same bag so let's look at her Christmas accessories uh, because 
yeah, I'll end up forgetting and I'll be back editing this and be like, oh, my hair looks bad. So I don't want to film this part now. So again, this is completely untouched. I'm not even taking it out of the bag because I am pretty sure that this is the original bag that it was shipped in. And it looks like it has the original fold and everything. But this is Addie's needlework kit. Again, it came with an apron that had some printing on it to like be a guide for sewing uh all the embroidery that was meant to go on this one of these days i will find somebody that's beautifully embroidered one of these i don't think i want to take the time to do one myself but this has like the loop and everything in it this it would be completely meant and i love that this has like real life needles in it i don't feel like you could get away with this these days like having a children's toy meant for like an eight-year-old and it's like got like sharp ass needles in it i don't know maybe they do i guess they're sending out like raw resin with that mini brands whatever like i saw a bit of that on tiktok i was like that is wild that they are sending like resin mixing kits to children because that that stuff really is toxic and this is coming from somebody that's had extensive experience with resin i will not get near it again but anyway that's a tangent so there i don't know if this came with this set i swear i have seen this before so i'm keeping this with the needleworking kit this might be like a practice piece of like muslin or whatever to work on. So I'm going to assume this is part of all of this. I'm not going to like dump it in the rag pile. But I, from memory, I think some of these sewing kits actually came with some fabric to practice on before you went and worked on the real thing. Because this stuff was expensive. You know, even, honestly, it's kind of expensive even by today's standards, like adjusting for inflation. But yeah, the stuff was expensive and was meant to be taken care of. So it is within the realm of possibility that you were expected to practice before actually taking a needle to Addie's apron. What else is in here? I know I have the other part of this. So one of the other really cool things I got with this set that really kind of helped um, me justify the price of it, because this is so expensive on the resale market, is I got her sweet potato pudding kit. And I actually think the recipe... I think that actually might be the recipe right there in that bag with the needlework kit. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm It's in here somewhere. But this is the original 1993 uh, sweet potato pudding kit. So it's got the original spoon. This one has the holly um, in it, which is, again, like one of the things that's like common. If you're going to not have anything from Addie's collection, it's going to be that sprig of holly. So I did manage to get that in my collection, which is exciting. And here is the cast iron skillet from that set. And when I tell you this is a cast iron skillet, this is a freaking cast iron skillet. Like you could whack somebody over the head with this and do some proper damage. I mean, hello, like this has even like the feet on it. So you got them in the eye. Like you could mess somebody up if they broke into your house. So I don't know, maybe I'll keep this handy because you know, based on where we're living right now, I might need this. Oh, I think as part of Addie's needlework kit, I forgot that this was, I think part of that collection is this lantern that has like come apart and hopefully I'm not too much of an idiot to be able to put this back together. Oh, it's, hang on, I don't wanna screw this up because it like, I know that it actually functions, but we've got this like reflector here. We'll come back to that. But the, this lantern part, I didn't realize this actually comes apart. This stuff is so intricate. I need to be careful because I really don't want to screw this up. So you're not going to probably see it and it's like full action today. But this is the lantern. I will say good on them for doing this with actual plastic. Like this is one of the few instances of plastic you'll see. But honestly, this did not need to be glass. I can imagine the lawsuits that would have ensued had this been glass because... I just picture a lot of bleeding little fingers <laughs> when I look at this. So, uh, yeah, this is plastic. I do know that the wick on this actually goes up and down because I played with it already. Can you see that? Probably not because of the reflections, but it, like, goes up and down. That is so cool. Now, I know this wasn't meant to be burnt, but it's fun to have that, like, little bit of play value with this. It's really cool, but I'm going to try and, like gently put this away because I need to really look after this because this is one of those things that's kind of a bit hard to find especially with all the pieces intact. All right hopping on over we have her Christmas dress again with a 1993 copyright tag which I I think there are so few of you that actually care about copyright years because I don't feel like I have that much competition on eBay like trying to get like 1993 versus 1994 <laughs> items but it's just how my brain works and it's how I like to collect but 
um yeah we've got her christmas dress which is one of my favorite that they've ever made it's like red and green plaid this one's in pretty good shape so yeah i probably will like i said i'm holding on to all this stuff it was a part of an original collection so yeah this is a nice piece to have to it i think i need to adjust the lighting on my camera because i've been so talking so long that the sun has moved and i feel like my face is looking crazy in this light so give me one second and i'll be right back with a uh, better adjustment on the lighting all right, that should be a little bit better. I really hate how I have to like look at my face when the lighting's dark without getting into the idiosyncrasies of filming. When you're my age, you kind of have to do a little bit of lighting and filter adjustment so you don't look like a complete hag on camera. So that's gonna be real fun for me later. I probably will just be ugly on the internet and just suffer the consequences. Cause some of y'all are kind of mean, but most of you are nice. Here's another thing I ended up getting. I think this video is getting crazy long and I don't, it's not part of Addie's collection. It just was something that came with it. And again, I'm gonna keep it. I'm collecting the original uh, American Girl of Today collection from the 90s. So I'm just gonna keep this, but this is a complete original Kwanzaa set from the American Girl of Today line. And I'm just, I'm probably gonna keep it with Addie just because, you know, I feel like it belongs to her at this point. So we won't go through every little piece, but just know that it's complete. And uh, I will probably try and enjoy this more around the holiday season because it has some really beautiful pieces in here. So I might actually put Addie in this for Christmas. We shall see. I don't know if Addie celebrated Kwanzaa. So uh, maybe I'll put it on like my number 18 or something. But yeah, it's a really great piece to have. I know this can be kind of hard to find complete. So I'm really happy that I have this. Yeah, we might save it for uh, maybe an American Girl of Today video. I've been kind of thinking about it. I've had a couple requests for it, if you're still watching. Would you be interested in seeing an updated American Girl of Today collection? I've got most of them. I think I have about 16 of the original 20 dolls, plus some of my favorite looks from the 90s. If you want to see that, again, let me know in the comments. I might make that sooner rather than later if you're interested, but... I've really been enjoying 90s Pleasant Company lately and particularly American Girl Today is like one of my favorite things I've ever made. In fact, I secretly suspect if 1995 was like the year I learned about Pleasant Company, I could see how I would probably have been more interested in the Girl of Today line more so than the historical line, which is crazy to say. Um, but just, you know, the way I grew up, we only had the historical stuff and the books and the stories and all those characters were such a part of my childhood that I can't imagine it any other way. So I, I don't know, who knows? I Realistically, I just probably would have wanted and begged for it all. So yeah, I mean, let's just be so for real right now. I mean, since we're going through all of here, you can see like these are all of the pamphlets that this person saved and every single one of them, but one of them is borderless, which is another way I know that this is a true first edition Addy collection because they didn't make these pamphlets for very long. It was basically 1993 and that was it because they were transitioning into this style of pamphlet when they changed the boxes to white and Addy has only ever been shipped in a white box. So um, yeah, this, I'm wondering what in this, that's interesting. This person had something that wasn't in this lot because there's nothing depicted here that was in this collection, unfortunately. Um, but I can't remember... This makes me think that maybe they didn't do a borderless version of Addie's Summer and Winter Stories, but I'm not, don't hold me to that because that might not be true, but it's possible because they came out in 1994. So yeah, maybe they don't have a borderless version of this. So um, yeah, there's probably like a really like beautiful like jacket floating around somewhere that belongs with this collection. I really wish I had because I had to go on Mercari and buy one separately and I like had to do so many back and forth like trying to get a decent deal on it, but I was that annoying buyer that like sent in like four offers trying to get like literally it was like down to like dollars in the end. I'm sure they were just like I'll oh, just take this stupid thing I'm so sick of dealing with you but um we have a I think maybe a complete book set in here it might be backwards but we have a paperback version of changes for Addie which is so cute um I think the rest are hardback let's see here these aren't in order obviously I'm just showing them as they um are coming out of the box this is Addie's surprise hardback these are in like basically mint condition, no tears, no, like one other great thing is this stuff was all stored in the trunk very clearly over the years because they, these weren't made with acid free paper. So these books yellowed over the years and these still look very, very crisp. And I was gonna say white, it's more of an ivory color, but 
these look like just as good as the day they were published basically so all right my camera overheated because it's hot as balls here and my air conditioner is so loud that i have to do this in a completely unair conditioned room living in a house that's not very well insulated so yeah it's a bit of a struggle uh but yeah let's continue going i'm i think we were just looking at books so i'm just gonna keep digging through this trunk we're kind of towards the bottom of it but i do want to show you some of my other addy things that i've gotten recently as well because i'm just like i said i'm kind of on a tear just trying to complete addy's collection so here we go we have a paperback of happy birthday addy i love these illustrations too oh she looks so cute and happy in this photo i love this illustration she's got I don't know, that smile on her face, it, like, it's a little bit goofy, but in the best way. I, oh, that's so cute. Uh, we have another Meet Addy book, which is interesting. This um, the previous owner might have bought a boxed set. Oh, wait, no. I think the book came was with my other doll. I'm losing track of... This is like typical collector problems, right? Like, you just lose track of what's what. Um, luckily, I have a very detailed spreadsheet that tells me, but um, here's a hardback version of Meet Addy and a hardback version of Addie Learns a Lesson. So yeah, I basically have her original book set, I think. I think that was every single one of them. Although to be honest, I wanna get them all in hardback. So I probably will try and hunt down a complete like mint set of her, oh look, more pamphlets and a bookmark. I kind of think Addie originally came with a bookmark. I feel like every like complete first edition Addie that I've seen, ends up having a bookmark and a, and a pamphlet. So this is probably for the actual doll herself. So I'm gonna sequester these from the rest of them just because I am that guy. So anyway, and also there are no names written in the covers of these books, like where it says this book belongs to. I have a, a very sneaking suspicion this belonged to an adult and not a child, which um, is so cool. I like feel connected to them in that way. So uh, let's see. I think what I'm gonna do is go over to my Addy display and pull off some of the newer things that I picked up. Cause I mean, this video is already like a thousand hours long. I mean, if you're already here, I'm sure you wouldn't mind continuing the ride. So let me grab a few more things and we'll look at them. All right, we're struggling with the light. It's like just a partly cloudy day, which is always like the bane of my existence when trying to film with natural light. But if you made it this far, I kind of feel like you don't care and you might even be asleep. <laughs> what if I made a really loud sound right now to scare you that would be so mean so i ended up getting a complete first edition version of the mini dolls from 19 i think these were 1996 i can't remember if it was 95 or 96 but this is from the girl of today line but they did the original ones people call these glass eyed i don't know if they i don't know if these are actual glass or if they're just shiny plastic but they're referred to as like the glass eyed version of the mini dolls they're the very first ones i don't know why this won't focus anyway so this is addy from my first set of the mini dolls i also ended up snagging her band box which is one of those harder things to find especially like in good condition because this is made out of like paper basically it's one, just one of those rare items and I've always loved it. So this was fun to pick up. I got it in its original box. I think, I know I have the original box. I can't remember if this is the product code for it. This is ACAG, which is Addy Christmas Accessories something. This could have been for something else. I can't remember the product code, but either way I have her band box. And if this isn't the box that goes with this, I've got it somewhere else um, in my doll closet. I also have her complete what I think is a first edition set of her gardening supplies. If I can dig out the rest of it, I will try, but I got it mint in the box. So it came with a watering can and it also has the basket, which is in great shape. No like dents or anything. It's a little bit like, it's got some dark spots in it, but I think that's just like the nature of natural material. I don't think it's actually any like damage or wear on it. And all of the vegetables are in the original bag as well. And it is got the original tape. These will never come out as long as I live at least. So um, yeah, this is like the original vegetable set. This is all like basically, I would say paper mache. Like these are very lightweight and feel like they're made out of paper and they're really, really cool. I'm probably gonna pick up a duplicate set later that I can actually display properly in the basket because on my display, I basically just leave them in the bag like this, which, you know, honestly, it looks fine, even though I feel like during Addie's time, they, we probably didn't have like microplastics, but yeah, that's how they get displayed on the display. And her hoe, I think it's a hoe, is still in the original box. I might not be able to dig it out today, but I did kind of want to go through the outfits that I have because again, I, this is basically just an update on my Addie collection video at this point. But uh, yeah, let me grab some more things. 
Yeah, I had a suspicion I was wrong about Addie's band box. So this is her band box box here, which has the code I can't read. It says A W A L, which would be Addie Winter Accessories Luggage. So that is her band box. And I don't know why I can't remember what G stands for in this, but there might actually be something in this box. Oh, I know what it is. It's her needleworking kit. And I think I have a partial one. I think that's all that is. <sighs> yeah, so this is my duplicate for the needleworking kit. I probably, I think this is partial, so I probably will just sell what's in here and then just keep the box. And, you know, eventually I will ultimately get one that came in its original box. But for now, that's good enough for me. I'm trying to be good and not like have everything in its original box because it is so many boxes like you can flat pack them but i don't know it just feels dangerous to do that to me so like uh, it just takes up so much space and between molly samantha kirsten felicity addy and josefina that's six full dolls collection including furniture and everything with boxes so like particularly think about it, if you get like Addie's like double desk and you want to display the desk, then you have a box that's also as big as the desk that you got to find a space for. So I'm trying to be good and like not get so focused on that. Um, I'm really trying to complete my Samantha in particular because I have a nearly perfect Samantha collection. I'm missing just like a couple of dumb things that aren't that hard to find. So I really am trying to finish her collection, complete first edition, mint in the box, everything, and then work my way back through Molly and Kirsten to finish those off. But I'm trying to be good with like Felicity, Addie, and Josefina and not do the original packaging boxes. But I, it's so hard to resist because like I was saying before, it's like, when do you get this in the mail and you get to slide the box, like the band off of the box and open it up and open the tissue paper, that experience feels like it, you're opening it for the first time, like you just ordered it from the catalog. Whereas like when you get something that's floating around in a dirty Amazon box, it's like been raw dogged in the mail like five times already. It just is not the same experience when you take it out and it's like there's a Trader Joe's like paper trash bag crumpled up and then there's your like pleasant company accessory in there that you're lucky you didn't get damaged. It's not the same experience. So that's why I have, like oftentimes We'll really try and find things brand new in the box because it, it gives you like that experience of unboxing it for the first time. So I don't know, I'm probably just gonna have to rent a storage unit at some point. And you know, I wouldn't be the first, let me tell you. So, it, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm a collector and I like things to be mint in first edition. So yeah, let me go dig through my boxes speaking of, see what else I can find. All right, I found it. This is my Addy gardening accessories, which has the product code AAAN again. First edition, you can tell by the printing on the sticker for the product code and that this is the Samantha Silhouette boxes that started in 1992, like late in 1992, but this is mostly associated with 1993 to 1996, roughly. No, maybe 1995. But anyway, um, we'll slide this off because I think there's... Um, you know, her hoe was in a different area code. I had to go to a different spot in my collection to find Addie's hoe. Watch this not even be called a hoe. It's like a rake or something. And I'm just being a complete imbecile. But yeah, this is like, got all of the original tissue paper and pamphlet and everything. I got what I felt like was a good deal on this. I paid about what you would pay for a pretty good condition, complete, like unboxed one. And this was like completely perfect. Like everything was in its original packaging. Somebody just bought this and stored it. But this is her, is it a hoe? It's our hoe. Yeah, Addie's hoe from a different area code. But um, yeah, this part just lives in the box because I don't have space for it quite yet on Addie's display. But I really am working towards in the next house doing a full bookcase for every single doll from the Pleasant Company era. So again, through Josefina, which I have Josefina's collection now and it's nearly complete. I got a lot of it a few months ago. I just a slam dunk of a deal that I couldn't say no to because somebody just again it's just somebody that didn't know what they had they sold like a, i'm not kidding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of josefina stuff for like 150 dollars, and i scooped it up and bought it i almost felt a little bit guilty but eh, whatever i was going through a really hard time when it happened and it was brought a lot of sunshine to my life when i was not feeling good again read the community tab if you want to know what happened but um yeah, if you want to see my Josefina collection, let me know. I Like I said, it is a good Josefina collection. I I love her collection, and I won't make the end of this video about her, but I, Josefina is special to me now, so I am really, really into her, and I am 
kind of like just snipping off the last little bits of her collection because like I said, I've pretty much got most of it now. I'm just finding those last little things. I just got the Santa Fe set and her, um, the, the toy farm. I got both of those in one lot the other day for like the craziest price you've ever heard of those selling for. And they were, I think almost, I'm missing the hand mirror, I think, but they were almost complete like mint condition first year. I was like, yes. So yeah, maybe, should, do you want me to do the same version of this with Josefina? I always had this like vision of doing like a really nice, like pull everything out. One of my favorite YouTube channels, um, her name is Allison and her YouTube channel is Muñecas, Poupes and Dolls. It was one, these were some of the first videos I watched when I started collecting in 2021. And she has like, she, I love her channel so much. And I think she's not, doesn't live that far from me. But um, she did videos like showing off her like full collections that she had of like her original dolls, like Addie, like Felicity and all of them. But um, I like envisioned doing a similar style of video where I had a big table, pulled everything out, made it look beautiful like she did. And here I am like with Addie's collection, albeit beautiful, is like just plonked on top of a dirty old box that like Courtney's bed was shipped in. So I don't know. I just feel like if I go... I don't know. I feel like doing these like impromptu and really casual like this is how they end up getting done. Cause if I have to like pull out a table and like make a full display, then I'm just not going to freaking do it. So I, that's what my vision was for all of this was to like really pull it out and make it pretty. And um, maybe I'll go back and do that again once everything is completely complete. But let me know if you'd like to see like the, basically this version of Josefita's collection where I just pull out a dirty old box and we just look at everything that I have. I, I really would like to. I've fallen in love with her collection. So anyway, yeah, if you want to see that, let me know. But let me um, let's go through Addie's outfits. This is a long video today. So like I almost feel like I've made it my own personal challenge to make this the longest video I've ever uploaded to YouTube. But I'll show you how I store um, all of my outfits now or at least lately. And I'll just like run you through all the stuff that I currently have. All right, I do have so much stuff that I need to like do this in like a couple of different sections, but we'll just kind of like randomly go through them. So almost all of this stuff is going to be first year. There might be a 1994 tag here and there, but this is her nightgown. And you can see here, I just have like Walmart freezer bags with a gusset on the bottom that I flipped upside down and basically cut a hole for a coat hanger to go through that that's just to keep like dust off of them because i have them like out kind of in the open in my doll closet basically and so they're all hung up like this and it just basically serves as a garment bag to keep like dye transfer like for some reason like something rubbed up against something else and you know some things do like shed a little bit so it just kind of protects everything from everything else and more importantly dust because i don't change my dolls like very often so i like to try and keep this stuff as neat as possible especially because there have been a couple things that i've just had to like iron because they arrived wrinkled but this is the first edition of her um birthday outfit i do have the socks and the pinafore or the snood and i think there was something else that came with this but I, they're stuck in a random Kirsten trunk and I'm not digging it out today because this room is already a disaster because of today's video. So um, just you'll have to trust and believe that I have these all complete. And this is my original set that I've already had of her school outfit. And I think the spelling bee pen is actually on this one. So let me grab the rest of it. All right, knowing me, there's probably other stuff floating around somewhere, but we're, I think this is like the vast majority of what I have. Um, here are here's her snood from her birthday outfit, along with the hat from her summer outfit and the socks from her birthday outfit. And then we've got her summer outfit, which I got a while. I've had this for a while now, but it just popped up for an amazing deal, or at least at the time on Mercari. Uh, a couple years ago, it had the original pin and it came with her original shoes and obviously it had the hat and I, this is one of my favorites. I love like a ditzy floral pattern like this. It is so country looking. I love it so much. So this is one of my favorite outfits that they made for her. But honestly, like I really, really, really love Addie's collection. There's really not much in it that I don't like. And even the one item that I thought I wasn't going to get because I was like, I don't really like that much. It's really grown on me, which is that... Um, the striped dress with like the green grow green like headband bow i've gotten to where i kind of like love that too now so i just i think this is such a stellar beautifully made collection this is her work dress with the pinafore and yes it does have all of the original clothes pins in the pocket on the pinafore and they're still like sealed in their original bag again this is a first year which i think 
I think it was 94. I could be wrong. It might, it might be 93, but typically this stuff was like issued later. I think this is a 94. I've got her Christmas outfit. I actually think this is a 95, but it came in the original bag and this is completely complete with the original hair ribbon, uh, like the satin green hair ribbon that came with it. And then here are some of my, like, I think these are probably most people's holy grail outfits for Addy. And not only are they rare, they're exceptionally beautiful. So I do have the Cape Island dress, which I have lucked out over the years. I think this is like one of three that I've found over the years. And I've just sold the other ones to pay for other things in my Addy collection. But this is a beautifully crispy mint uh, Cape Island dress along with the original bow. This isn't one of the replicas. This is the original hair rip like plaid hair ribbon that came with them. So this is complete. Maybe one day I'll try and find it in the box, but I'm really trying to be good and not collect Addy like mint in box. Although as you could see earlier, I I'm failing miserably, but I just love this dress. And if you want, if this is on your grail list, I, I think it's worth the wait trying to like really like you can find a good deal if you're, if you really, really look, but at some point, if you end up just saying, you know, screw it, I'm going to save up the money and buy it. It is worth it. I will say this fits newer Addies better than the older ones. I am very, very careful when I put this on my first edition Addy because it is tight and it is also tight around the arms as well. And I am so nervous. I'm going to bust a seam. I am kind of at the point where I might actually swap, like put my first edition my the girl that i showed you earlier the one that like i painted the silver eye on she's been taken apart already so it's not a big issue to take her head off i might swap her head with a mattel body so that i can display her in this comfortably because those dolls are just like ever so slightly skinnier this will fit her nicely so i can have a first edition addy wearing this still um that's kind of my plan for that i think so um yeah this this cape island is so beautifully made. I it, I cannot believe they did this at scale. This is so beautiful. I just cannot believe they made thousands of these, but it wasn't available very long and it's very rare and very valued. The fabric that they use is sort of like this summery, like kind of linen. It's not what you expect from American Girl, even from this time. This is one of the best outfits they've ever made. And I hopefully I'm not jacking the prices on eBay up on these, but I will say if you want this, try and make it happen. You will not be disappointed in the outfit. It is truly beautiful. And the salmon pink just looks so good on Addy. It, it probably, if I had to say, this is probably my single favorite outfit that they made for her. It's, it's coveted for a reason. It is not only rare, but it is extremely beautiful. And then the last item I think that I have to show you today, and again, I know I have Addie's work shoes. They're probably in Kirsten's trunk because that I was using a duplicate Kirsten trunk for overflow. Her work shoes are incredibly rare. Like they're very hard to find and people will charge at least like $75 for them. They're like kind of like slip-ons with like a tie over the front. I do have them. I'm probably not going to dig them out, but um, that's one thing off the top of my head that I know I have that I didn't show you today, but Another super rare, very coveted Addy item is her prototype dress. Now this dress was never in, like officially in production. This never was put in catalogs. However, it, the story goes that this was the original design for Addy's meat dress that she was originally supposed to ship in. And one of the things that I think is so interesting about it is that Hang on one second. Let me put these others away because I want to talk about this for a second. So one of the things that I think is so interesting about this dress is I think that it is actually cinnamon pink. So I believe that somewhere, whether the catalog or the, like the books or whatever, they describe the color of Addie's dress as cinnamon pink. And this is, I think, like truly a cinnamon pink because it it's like a pink, but it's very muted and has like brown undertones, which... You know, it's not like a bright, bright pink. And I would describe, like cinnamon pink describes this perfectly. When you compare that to what originally ended up being her meat outfit. So this is obviously Addie's iconic meat outfit that they ultimately went with in 1993. And all the way up until Be Forever, this was Addie's meat outfit. You can see the comparison between these two pinks here. This is a much warmer, bright pink. I don't consider this to be a cinnamon pink. Like, I, I don't even, this is just like, a pink pink like almost like a it's not like a pepto pink but 
when you envision a pink color, it's mostly this. It's a pretty big stretch, I think, to consider this cinnamon pink. So when you compare these side by side, you can see, like, I kind of feel like this is what they had in mind when they were describing her dress as cinnamon pink, is this really muted, soft, like, almost brownie pink. And let me tell you, this does look equally as gorgeous on her. You know, I the original Pleasant Company collection, we're talking, like, all the way, like, up until Addie, like, their meat outfits were pretty, like, demure and, like, muted. Like, you think about, like, Samantha and Molly, even Kirsten, she had, like, a blue dress, but it was still kind of, like, a muted blue, and Felicity had that, like, ivory, like, and burgundy, like, floral. This was sort of new, and again, this is probably why, like, one, like I said, one of the big reasons when I saw Addie in the catalog for the first time, like, this big pop of pink, like, it worked on my little 1993, like, little boy brain. I loved this outfit, so I'm not saying they were wrong to switch it, but this feels like a little bit more in line, I think, with the Pleasant Company aesthetic, because it, again, it's just a little bit more demure and historical looking. Again, I'm sure this is, like, historically accurate, but... I don't know. I just, I, I love both. I, I love a floral. Like I said, I love a ditzy floral. Actually, if you've never seen this up close, it's actually not floral. It's like little maple leaves or something on here. It's actually leaves. It's very autumnal. So um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that's a fun fact. And also this, there were as there was a set of bloomers that came with this as well. Um, oh, and so yeah, story has it that these were basically just offloaded at the Madison Children's Museum sale one year. They just had probably a big box of them that the factory had put together and they shipped them over to Wisconsin and they just sold them as part of the MCM charity sale one year. I don't know what year, probably in the mid nineties. It's not always like the exactly the year after, but if I had to guess, I would say 1994, 1995 is probably about when these were sold to the public. I don't know how many they made. I would guess maybe a hundred to 500, um, maybe somewhere around two to 200 to 250. You can find these. They're not incredibly rare. But I think because they were sold as like a special item, people held onto these and children didn't get them. So that's why they're not as hard to find because I think that they were kind of a special sale. So you can find this. As a general rule, you will pay as much as like $250 for one of these and as little as like however cheap you can find them. But if you can find one for 100, 150 bucks, I think that's a good price. And there's a special pair of bloomers that came with these as well. I don't, I probably won't be able to dig them out, but the, basically the difference was the trim on the prototype bloomers has like a little floral um, star like embroidered detail on each of the scallops. It's really, really pretty. I don't know why they changed it. Maybe a cost saving measure but it was the same trend that they used on some of the art uh, like the new baby collection that they released in 1991 so uh or sorry 1990 the new baby collection some of the trims on their outfits had the same trim as addy's prototype bloomers had and i have actually i think i have two pairs i'm i'm trying not to hoard but i think that's something i have two pairs of one for <laughs> like archive and one for display so yeah, that's another thing that you haven't seen today that I do have that might be kind of hard to dig out. But yeah, this is one of the coolest things I think in my Addy collection is having the original dress that was intended for her that was never officially released in the catalogs. All right, you've probably had enough of me for one day, but if you're still here, I just wanted to say thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is my favorite thing in the world to do, and I'm so glad that you're here to share it with me because if you've made it this long, I know you get it. You know the like amount of pure unfiltered joy that you get from experiencing this stuff whether it's the first for the first time or for the billionth time there is just something about a pleasant company collection that just ignites a little bit of like it's it, it's indescribable joy i cannot I can't even put a name on it. It would cheapen it to try and put it into words, but you know that feeling I'm talking about. So thank you for sharing that with me today. This is also a reminder that this channel is almost completely funded by my friends on Patreon. So if you check out the link in the description, it's a really great way to help support this channel so I can keep making videos like this because it is not only very time consuming, it is also very expensive to buy all of this stuff. But you know, whether you do or don't, I still love you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you want to find me on other places on the internet, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. You can shop at my shop and buy some really cool merch if you want. So you can check that out with the link in the description. And if y'all want to keep listening to me talk, I can't imagine why I feel like I've been talking for three hours today. But if y'all want to keep hanging out, I've got more videos on YouTube like this one right here. So I hope to see you there. Bye now.